the Secretary of Health and Human Services, Javier Becerra. He knows. No, he, he does knows not. better he than anybody want to talk about that this. wings are good not only for no. your mental health, but your overall yes. Secretary cardiovascular Becerra. health. Isn't that right, Mr. Secretary? <laughs> I'm glad we're being serious as usual in, on this show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's actually get there right now. In terms of the vaccine rollout, by the way, thank you for being on the show. Um, when you talk about the president's plan, getting the vaccine, bringing it to all people, what are some of the strategies that you are using and employing to try and get the vaccine to maybe vaccine hesitant communities? We saw that the governor of West Virginia is actually offering $100 bills. Mika, first, thanks for having me. And absolutely, we're going to get out there, make sure we go to every corner of the country. Uh, President Biden made it very clear in his first 100 days he was going to get shots in arms, 200 million shots in arms already. And what we're seeing is that Americans are coming forward. But in some cases, in some corners of the country, it's tough. And so rather than wait for folks to come to us, to the vaccine, we're going to them. And so whether it's in rural America, in some of the inner city impoverished areas of America, we're going to them. That's fantastic. Now, Mr. Secretary, we've heard uh, uh, traditionally people of color have been more reluctant to take vaccines. We now understand, looking at numbers, that people who supported Donald Trump uh, likewise are more skeptical of getting the vaccines. How helpful would it be if President Trump came forward and uh, gave a public service announcement uh, to get uh, more Americans to get those vaccines? Well, any anytime someone who you trust tells you something will work, you pay more attention. And so we would love all those who have the respect of the constituencies out there in America to get out there and help us, whether you're a, a faith leader, where you're, whether you're the civic leader, whether you're, you're just the, the, the patriarch or matriarch of a, of a big family. We just want folks to get out there. And so it all helps. And take a chicken wing with you, and maybe you'll get a few more oh, people no. to sign up as well. <laughs> exactly. Now, do, do you think that, again, I, I, I'm not, I don't want to bear down on this one, but it seems to me that, that he would have a, a huge impact. Do you think Donald Trump specifically doing a public service announcement might really uh, make a big difference in moving more Americans toward getting those vaccines? He, he has a large gathering and following, and uh, I would imagine that if former President Trump got out there and really made a pitch, a lot of folks would listen. And I would hope that uh, every American who believes that all of us deserve to be safe would get out there and pitch their fellow Americans. Mr. Secretary, it's Willie Geist. Good to see you this morning. I pro promise no questions about chicken wings for now. But um, let me ask you about what's happening at the southern border. As you know, a record number of unaccompanied minors came into the country, nearly 19,000 of them in the month of March. Those numbers continue to proceed through April. Overcrowded facilities, you've had to set up emergency facilities down along the border. Why are we seeing so many unaccompanied minors and what's being done to expedite them through the system? Willie, great question. I wish you would have thrown me one about chicken wings better, but let me tell you, the, the, I think what's going on, I think what's going on is, uh, remember, there was a, a period of close to a year where the the border was completely sealed. Uh, today, we're trying to make sure that for, especially for children, we, we, we want to make sure that we are careful with children. We don't know what the final outcome will be for these kids. They may end up getting sent back to their home country. But while they're here, if you see a child at your doorstep, uh, you're going to try to do what you can to keep them safe. And that's our job at HHS. Once we get them from Department of Homeland Security, we have to make sure that they're safe. Uh, we uh, provide them with uh, the care that they need. Ultimately, what happens with them, that's not for us to decide, but we want to make sure that that child is safe. Just as you were concerned, I know, about the conditions of some of these facilities under President Trump, there is concern about these facilities, particularly for children under the Biden administration. What can you say about the well-being and safety of those kids as they're housed, awaiting to be processed through the system? Uh, now, Willie, that question, I'm glad you asked, because we're doing this legally, and we're doing this responsibly, and we're doing this humanely. Uh, we are going to treat these kids the way any child should be treated. Again, we don't get involved in their immigration status. We don't make a decision on whether they stay or go, but we will make sure that they're safe. And we're doing everything we can, even with the, the numbers that have come through, even in these temporary shelters, we're going to make sure that they're safe. Do you think they're overcrowded right now, Mr. Secretary? 
No, they cannot be overcrowded. The, the facilities that we run cannot be overcrowded. We have legal requirements of what we can do. That's what makes it so tough, Willie. It, it's not an easy thing. And these are not adults, so that the requirements are even bigger. And remember as well, we've got COVID. So the number of kids you could put in a facility before, you can't do today. And so all of that makes it more of a challenge. But we're meeting the challenge. And President Biden has given clear direction. Do this the right way. Do this the responsible way. Mr. Secretary, Casey Hunt's here with a question for you. Case. Mr. Secretary, good to see you this morning. I'd like to ask you about the upcoming joint address that President Biden is set to give to Congress tomorrow night. Uh, what do you expect or what would you like to hear from President Biden in terms of some of the things that fall under your purview, particularly on health care? that he's going to go big. Uh, and so far, that's exactly what he's done. Kate, look at what he has accomplished. Uh, who would have said that uh, close to 100 million Americans today would have been fully vaccinated, fully vaccinated, two thirds of seniors today fully vaccinated? Who would have said that in the last for, or the first six weeks of this open enrollment for health insurance, Eight, uh, 500,000 Americans would have already stepped forward. Uh, all these things are making sure that Americans not only get covered, but they have good health insurance in the, into the future. And by God, do we need it given things like this pandemic. And so I think the president's going to continue to go big. We're going to make sure that we clearly state why it's so important that we get vaccinated, continue to wear masks, even if you're vaccinated. It's just, it's just one of those things where President Biden made it very clear. And he's, he's showing by example which is what you want in a leader. Let me tell you, these first 100 days, I defy you to find another president who can say he's done as much. So, Mr. Secretary, one problem that's hitting households, even if they've been able to find coverage, there, there was some weakening of the rules during the Trump administration that allowed insurance companies more leeway to offer plans that maybe they cost less upfront, but at the end of the day would cost families more because they didn't cover as many things. And ultimately, controlling health care costs in this country is going to take uh, significant courage to stand up to an industry, uh, whether it's hospitals, drug makers, insurance companies. Is President Biden going to be the person that finally has that courage? Because uh, we have really struggled with this. And we, the numbers now show that health care costs are still rising uh, at rates that are unaffordable for Americans. Yeah, and Kate, what you're pointing out, some people call these plans that really don't offer you much coverage. They're low price, but offer you very little coverage. Junk plans, because at the end of the day, it's junk. And President Biden has said, we're not doing that. But because of the American Rescue Plan that the president was able to get passed by Congress, we can now offer Americans help in, uh, in covering the cost of those plans that are good, that are real plans. And so rather than give you a plan that's going to give you sticker shock when you see the bill in the mail after you've gone to the hospital, the president has made it very clear, we're going to make it affordable. And that's why you saw over 500,000 Americans sign up for new plans, because they found out that they're getting a very, very affordable rates for the plans that they're getting to cover themselves or their families. We, we saw, Mr. Secretary, the number of uninsured Americans go up during the, the Trump administration, just as it had gone down after the Affordable Care Act passed. Uh, in 2010. What's your goal? What is Joe Biden's goal uh, when you look at numbers of insured uh, and uninsured Americans? Uh, what, what's your goal by the end of this term? I, I think President Biden made it very clear early on. You've got to bring down the cost of health care for everyone. Then you've got to make sure everyone knows that they can afford it because most people think, gosh, I've never been able to afford it. Why even try? Take a look. You'll afford it. But third, it's going to people who've never really had it, not waiting for them to come to us, go to them, let them see that they can afford this and get covered. Because I was fortunate. My dad had coverage because he had a union job and his union offered health care. But he made very little money. Not every American has that opportunity. And so we got to make sure that today Americans know they can afford their health care. Joe Biden's working really hard as our president to make that happen. Secretary right. Javier Becerra, thank you very much for being on the show this morning. We and, appreciate it. And again, it. If, if you missed the first part of <clears throat> no. this interview, uh, like you didn't uh, miss anything. Over Brimley, he said <sighs> chicken wings. No. It's just, they're just the right thing to do. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Okay. Maybe you didn't say thank that. You. But great to see you, Mr. Secretary. Up next, the warning signs that Facebook didn't it want really its employees to read. No. Chicken it's, wings, the new no, It's not. Ahead of the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Now the report has been published, and that is next You'll give in, on Morning Joe. 
Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.